Thank you very much, Chris. As the sun sets over the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre, it is New Zealand versus Australia. No doubt fans in both those countries have got up in the middle of the night to watch this one. Such an important match for both these teams to determine whether they progress in the tournament and who they will meet in the crossover or in the next round in the quarterfinals. Both teams lining up inside the tunnel. Emily Smith celebrating her 26th birthday today. Will she be rewarded with a victory as captain of the Hockey Roos? Stacey Mickelson, a picture of concentration. And they make their way down onto the turf. And there's plenty of support around the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre for both these teams, as you would expect. Plenty of green and gold and plenty of black and white or black and silver as well. Who would have thought it would come down to this final game in Pool D to determine the final standings? We will now pause for the national anthems. First up is the national anthem of New Zealand. Generous applause for the Black Sticks, and now it's the national anthem of Australia. Generous applause for the Australians. Players go through and shake hands before we have the 133rd meeting between these two teams getting underway. Take a look at the lineups. First of all, Sally Rutherford starts under the bar for New Zealand. In defence, well, Brooke Neal and Emma, Emma uh, Thompson and Liz Thompson are going to be crucial. Cadell on the flank will also be a key component getting forward for New Zealand. The midfield is where this game may be won and lost. Mickelson, McLaren, so important. So too, though, steady Eddie Charlton. Sam Charlton, nickname is Eddie. And Olivia Merry and Shyla Gloin up front are the players with the shoulder the responsibility of getting goals for the Black Sticks. Take a look at Australia's lineup, and Rachel Lynch starts under the bar for them. She's been in good form in this tournament. Jodie Kenny back in the lineup, but she's assisted well by Georgina Morgan, Carrie McMahon, and Eddie Bone, and they have been really good in defence. Steph Kershaw has been lively in the midfield, and Renee Taylor too has been solid with Paris making good breaks forward. Rosie Malone is a new face, working alongside Emily Smith. If they can combine, Australia may find goals. Still some firepower on the bench as well with Catherine Slattery and Grace Stewart in the forward line. Now certainly the Australians looking relaxed. Anita McLaren 
such an important player. And Olivia Mary, as we said, often the unsung hero. She's came up with two goals and turned the game against Belgium. And she's going to be, have to be on form tonight as Rachel Lynch just checks her goal. And it will be the Black Sticks to push back and get us underway. And what a game this is going to be. New Zealand versus Australia, the final game in Pool D. Just to try and clarify some of the permutations. If this game finishes in a draw, Australia will finish top. Belgium are currently top of the ladder, but they will not be able to if it finishes in a draw or if either of these teams win. But after that, it is playing off to see who will finish second or third. And it's going to come down to goal difference, and all sorts of possibly all sorts of other stats as well we hope it doesn't go to that because it's pretty hard to keep across it all but i'm ashley morrison and alongside me for this one is mel clulo former great britain and england star and mel you couldn't want for a better game at the end of a pool no you couldn't and i'm glad you've introduced me after working out all the permutations because it's been an absolute headache all day watching that table chop and change i mean japan and belgium served up an absolute cracker and i think in in australia and new zealand we're expecting something very similar well, the big problem, as we said, is if it the first deciding factor, if it does finish in a draw, is games one, and it would mean all four teams in this pool would have won one goal, one game rather. So then it goes down to goal difference. And just to make you aware of where we're at at the moment, Australia's goal difference is plus one, New Zealand's is plus one, Belgium's is plus one, and Japan's is minus three. So it is very, very close. After that, if we're all tied up, it goes down to goals scored. And we should just also mention that the reason you don't want to finish third is you'll play Argentina in a crossover match because Germany topped Pool C. You come second, you will play Spain in a crossover match. There is Paul Godoyne, the coach of Australia. I'm sure he's got someone working it all out for him. As Australia come forward, drilled into the D, no touch though. The way this tournament's gone, there's no point trying to work out who you're going to play and where and what the crossovers are going to be. The form book has well and truly gone out the out of out of the window in this tournament. So I, I think both these teams, the main priority will be getting through to those to the knockout stages. And if you end up finishing top of the court, obviously that is the aim that you want, but that can't be the sole focus. Absolutely. Well, I mentioned this is the 133rd meeting between these two teams. Australia have won 89, New Zealand 25, and there have been 18 draws as Smith brings it into the D. Australia managed to clear momentarily. Now there's a chance to get it back inside the circle. Three hit just outside to the Black Sticks. McLaren is lurking at the top of the circle. Another free hit, but this time it goes to Australia. I should mention in those stats for the results, I've not included shootout results because obviously those games finished in a draw. Coming forward again by Thompson. Thompson's still going. Comes up into the body of Jody Kenny, and the first penalty corner will go the way of New Zealand. Given by umpire Carolina De La Fuente from Argentina. She's joined on the pitch by Zhao Ying from China. Uncharacteristic error here from Jodie Kenny. Absolutely nobody around her. Yes, the ball skipped in, but a player of her quality, you'd expect her to make that trap every day of the week. Slight lack of concentration and an easy penalty corner. McLaren waiting at the top of the circle. Second battery, will they go to her? Rachel Lynch will be so familiar with some of these. They do go to McLaren. She sweeps higher. That's a great save. Into the D it goes. Ricocheted, I thought, just off the stick of Mary. She's going to steal it back inside the circle. It's Kelsey Smith. Long corner was the best that New Zealand could get.
McLaren, good control from her. It wasn't an easy ball to bring under control from Davies. This is the New Zealand's effort. They need to McLaren off the top. Fantastic clearance by Jody Kenny, making amends for that error of giving away the corner. Pretty dangerous though, you can see Rachel Lynch behind making the glove save and if you don't take it full on like Jody Kenny did there, there's every opportunity to actually edge it into the into the D, into the goal, sorry. New Zealand making a hash of clearing their lines there, picked up by Brooke Paris, Kershaw making a good run and unfortunately that was just too far ahead of her. The idea was a good one coming from Renee Taylor. Mark Hager. Watching on from the side, of course, played for Australia 230 times and scored 179 goals. So he says he is very much a New Zealander now. Talked to him about that, and he said he absolutely loves living over there. Did you ever lose your roots? That's a difficult question to answer. <laughs> I, just, I, mean, I guess my personal opinion is I sometimes struggle when. Somebody, you know, he's coaching the New Zealand team and he stands there and he sings their national anthem. And I think, well, you've stood there and you've sung your own national anthem and now suddenly that's happening. Well, kept in play by Paris. There may be question marks over that, but it's stolen by New Zealand, which is just as well. Paris, unfortunately, has stayed down behind play. She's up now. She's just got a wrap on her fingers. the hand Bates good ball in across the face of goal hammered towards goal by Grace Stewart the family has sat down below our commentary position and we would have really loved it to get a goal Georgina Morgan now from the side it's now wide on to the left hand side Mickelson looks to close down as it's played forward Stewart again with a good lead You'd expect a fairly cagey start to this game. So much at stake. As we revealed in the last match, if Australia absolutely thumped New Zealand, it could in fact give Japan a lifeline. I somehow don't think though it's going to be one-way traffic in this game. Cadell plays it forward, collected well by McLaren. Into the D she goes. She's gone underneath that one. Everyone in a black shirt was ahead of her. I think she almost looked too relaxed on that cross. I think if she had been putting every effort into it, I think it probably would have been flat on the floor, but just by relaxing, the hands go all wrong on the stick. Oh, lovely from Gunson. Gunson's had a stick knocked out of her hand in the challenge there with Kamindi Comerford. One was the call from the umpire, though, and Australia are happy to do so. Smith helps it forward. Oh. One there of Stewart. Slattery it was, in fact. Stewart now closing there. Lovely run into space from Sam Charlton. Not forward. Actually, her nickname was Eddie, of course, the famous snooker player. Eddie Charlton also boxed at the was the Commonwealth Games and carried the flag for New Zealand. Comes back, Gunson, top of the circle. Well, that's a strong challenge. Gunson takes a tumble. Australia sweep it clear. Ray Taylor may have been a little bit lucky with that one. I think it's just the difference in, in size, if I'm honest. Ray Taylor used her height exceptionally well in shoulder to shoulder tackle. He didn't, certainly didn't see any complaints from Gunson. Said by a defender. We've gone past the halfway point of the first quarter. The Slattery looks up. It's the free head is it just away from her. It's a little bit of danger now for New Zealand. Late in this first quarter. Rudy Kenny. Across to 
Danny Fitzpatrick. Bates did well to bring that under control. Of hip height. The pass just too far ahead of Slattery. Well, again by Fitzpatrick, kept in play. Bates calling for it just short in front, went to Smith. And on again quickly by Fitzpatrick. Bates drills it in, Slattery, always an opportunist. It just got taken away from him. I think it was Gunson that put the tackle in. You the Herbal Brook Neal. We've seen a lot. We have seen a lot of that in this tournament of players just prepared to take the swinging stick of the striker. Catherine Slatter has only got one thing in, on her mind when she's got the ball in the circle, and that's to get something on net. It's indeed, as David gives possession straight to Slattery, now it's Taylor. Renee Taylor, lovely pass, picks out Emily Smith. Emily Smith drives towards goal, was looking for the run of Slattery, but brilliant defending in the end. Brooke Neal doing a great job at that near post, stolen now by New Zealand. They get it forward, Mary's made a good run. Just couldn't release quick enough, was Kelsey Smith. Smith, though, looking to steal it, gets the free hit. There's something has gone on behind play. Stop time for some reason. I think there's going to be a cut issue. Okay. Australia or New Zealand? Just. It was. Then you said. It was you, I think. It was sliding. It was that slid in, but surely that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, but yeah. it's also a little, I mean, it's, okay. you can't blame Emily Smith for asking okay. the question. Okay. And she actually put the umpire under pressure, which is, who are you carding? I can't, you know, I don't, don't have, have a number. Okay. So it's unfortunately okay. for her, she put, yeah. you know, as captain, yeah. she could be it's the one that takes the card. Well, it looks as if there is going to be no card now. Yeah. New Zealand just making the changes. Having to attack, good ball out onto the right hand side. And first stick into the deep, well blocked again by Jody Kenny. Mickelson now, can she weave a little bit of magic? Gets past one, shadowed all the way brilliantly by Kalindi Coverford. Kalindi Coverford, her name means daughter of the sun god. There's no sun at the moment here, it's rather chilly. Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. Stolen by Mary. Mary looked to release it. Was that off the foot? No, says the umpire. Kershaw carries forward. Good pass, picks out Malone. Malone quite happy to take on Thompson. Australia just edging circle penetrations, but Rutherford not really being called into action as yet. That's probably going to be a trait of the game is, yes, we've got two exceptional teams and we're going to see a lot of build-up play probably making it to you know, the, the five-metre mark just out the side of the D, but then suddenly two decent defences and uh, sort of come into play and then the opportunities that would usually arise don't tend to happen as they nullify each other. Mickelson again, brilliant skill from her, takes her pass, Smith looks to feed it forward, that was good defending from Bates. Kershaw, is it forward, good work by Charlton. So, Australian player down on the halfway line, in a bit of trouble too by the looks of things, it's Comerford. She went to ground and then was holding either a calf or a hamstring. A little bit early in the game to be cramped, so let's hope it's nothing too serious. You can just see the grimace as she's trying to... I mean, trying to keep up with Stacey Mickelson's not an easy thing, is it? But you can see the grimace as she's doing it. 
sort of clear that something's not right with Andy Comerford and maybe Mr. Cullen will be able to find out for us what the damage is. Stolen inside the D, Kelsey Smith, Lynch comes out well, and it's gone in, it's fired home. Olivia Mary gets the first goal for the Black Sticks. Mark Hagar not smiling yet. He knows there's still plenty of game time left, but they are in the crowd. Probably what the game needed. I mean, Olivia Mary picks the pass from uh, Jodie Kenny out wide. Fantastic play initially by Kelsey Smith, and Olivia Mary just tracks, tracks in and from a reasonably tight angle with Australian defender on the goal line, squeezes it home. I think it's Renee Taylor back there, unable to stop it. Game on. It certainly is. Olivia Mary with her third goal of the tournament. Such an important player. There's so much riding on this game. Mark Hager trying to keep his players focused. Australia will look to bounce back immediately. That's what it means now if this result stood. Kershaw plays it in, it breaks free, fired towards the goal by Hertz. And that's why you can't take your eyes off the action. Now it's a race, Lynch comes out, needs to use a stick, does. It's great awareness shown by the Australian goalkeeper. It is a fantastic hit by Emily Hertz, and I'm probably one of Sally Rutherford's big, biggest critics, but she managed to get her, the right shoulder up and take the shot. Sally Rutherford made a debut back in 2009 against China, so she's been around for a while now in goal. Kershaw steals. Keeps running, looks to release it to Taylor. Taylor helps it out to Malone. Brilliant tackle, Gunson on the edge of the circle again. Rock solid at the back, Ella Gunson. And what I like about New Zealand at the moment is they're making their tackles outside the circle, so unless it's a, a deliberate nasty tackle or foul outside the D, they're not going to give away any penalty corners, which we know is going to be a huge strength of Australia's. Gunson again, she was a player who was in the New Zealand side in 2012 and then went to university in Boston and so wasn't recalled until 2014 but has done really well and been such a key performer for the Black Sticks. I think as well the key to the Black Sticks' success is so many of these players have been together for such a long period of time now. They, they play on instincts, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses showing at the moment. Well, that is the end of the first quarter. Olivia Mary's goal, the difference between the two teams. Will it be enough, though? Get the feeling there will be more goals in this match. But the Silver Fern is flying high here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. It's New Zealand 1, Australia 0 at the end of the first quarter. Mark Hager has his players around him. Unfortunately, we can't eavesdrop, but here is the goal. Kelsey Smith stole possession. Lynch came out. It rebounded to Mary, and she made no mistake. Uh, there's two errors, really, wasn't there? One from Jodie Kenny and then one from Georgia Morgan. And New Zealand just being that extra, extra yard ahead of Australia on picking up the pieces. Kelsey Smith first, and then Olivia Mary. And then this was the opportunity for Hertz. Rolls well, hits the ball, I think, in, possibly into the turf, but gets a big shot away. Just hits it on the bounce, and Sally Rutherford takes it on the on the body armour to keep the scoreline at 1-0 to New Zealand. Now the players making their way back out. And here is the table as it stands at the moment. There's still three quarters to play, but New Zealand now move up into first spot. Australia dropped to third, and Belgium sit in second. It is a bit like that, Anita McLaren puffing out her cheeks. We know exactly how you feel. Just 
waiting for the whistle to get the second quarter underway. Really good crowd in tonight for this match. No one could have foreseen how close this table would be in Pool D. It's a lovely turn coming from Francis Davis. She lost out in the end. Kershaw has pace to burn, looks to accelerate into the D. Really strong challenge coming in from Liz Thompson. Stop Kershaw somehow. I think she's been brilliant in this tournament. I think she was probably Australia's best player in the 0 0 draw against Belgium the other night. And here comes Olivia Mary chasing back is Georgina Morgan. Mary looks to spin. Morgan, oh, she got the touch. It was an important one. No idea how George Morgan's not been hit by this, I have to say. It's a huge backswing. Olivia Mary rolls really nicely. Very brave defending. Absolutely. Outstanding, really. Brilliant by Georgina Morgan. And he's again goes back to Thompson. Neil, team put under pressure by Malone. Almost stolen away by Slattery. That was very, very good by Brooke Neal. Mickelson now cuts him field again. Just leaves three gold shirted players in her wake. Finds Olivia Mary. Now waits at the top of the circle. The ball comes to McLaren. Sliding in with Smith. It comes back to Mary. But it'll be an Australia free hit. Thought Olivia Mary was going to. Pick the pocket of Edwina Bone there in the circle. And that for me is the difference at the moment. I think New Zealand look really sharp in the Australia circle, whether they've got the ball or whether they're trying to nick the ball and cause problems. Well, here is Eddie Bone now on the attack. Bone cracks it to the top of the circle. It's going to be a goal for Australia. Emily Smith scores. Australia of pool one level, and Emily Smith scores on her birthday. Well, I hope the video replay shows this, but Sally Rutherford comes running out of her D to try and take an Australian player who's actually being marked and then finds herself in no man's land. Emily Smith just moves the ball one step to the right, rolls it under. But you can see it, we're on the perfect camera angle. Sally Rutherford comes running out, I guess, to try and take. I think it was um, Grace Stewart running across the D initially. You can see her there. She's, I have no idea what she's doing there come a very long, long way and has paid a very heavy price. I look forward to Simon Mason's uh, half-time analysis on that one, I think. And Australia back level in this match. And here comes Brooke Perris surging forward. Andy Bone was given so much space and it was a good pass to pick out Smith. Australia have a penalty corner, so the momentum shifts. the perfect thing for Australia, isn't they? Score one, and then Brooke Perris comes running, always in control with the ball on that reverse stick, and it's it's almost a hopeful flick across goal. Cadell and Thompson were there double teaming, but ball pops up off Cadell's stick into her own body. When you have Jody Kenny in your side, you know that this is a really good opportunity. They may well, though, opt to go with Maddie Fitzpatrick. We haven't seen much from her from penalty corners in the tournament. They go to Kenny, it's not a good ball in. Smith shoots, saved by a logging Rutherford, still alive. Malone tried to just flick it back to Paris on the baseline. New Zealand survive. It's all Australia at the moment since that goal. Smith again on the reverse stick. Bobbles up over two players. How that wasn't dangerous, I'm not quite sure. Charlton, though, cleaned up at the back for the Black Sticks. Inside the deep, Terrace again, but dispossessed. And now the chance for the Black Sticks to counter attack. Ball thrown over the top. Bloin brings it down brilliantly. Bloin is on her own, though. She's got support now coming. Looks to fire it across the goal. Just a little bit too early for McLaren. I 
was McLaren, Harrison and Kelsey Smith all seemed to run a very similar line. You could see Gloin looking up, trying to find out where the teammates were, but they all ended up almost in a straight line rather than being on different angles and offering support. Hurts now for Australia. Looks to go inside Thompson. Thompson did well, forced it back on the outside. Pass was aimed for Malone. Thompson again steals it. One back by Malone. Strong challenge comes in from Davies. Just going over the side. Fitzpatrick plays on for us. Finds Hertz. Hertz down by the corner. Bangs it into the circle. Real pressure being applied again by Stewart. Certainly that goal has really lifted Australia. They look more purposeful and more intense. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Intense is definitely word, the word I'd use. There's a spring in their step. Now they're the ones that that half yard quicker to the ball. Gershaw looks to work her way around the back, wins the penalty corner. There's going to be a referral, though. Carry on. That was instant, wasn't it, from Brooke Neal? Hi, Maggie. Maggie, Maggie Giddens can you of the me? USA, the video I umpire. Yeah, I belong for food in the inside circle. Big tag, that. yeah. No problem. question isn't it like I say the Brooke Neal's response was instant looked to be stick there didn't it but then in Stephanie Kershaw's reaction was instant as well looks like the hand to me big left hand from Brooke Neal and the hand on the stick is regarded as stick yeah Cindy, yep. I have a decision for you. Yep. Free hit out. Uh, New Zealand keeps their referral. Okay. It was her hand. Okay, thank you. So as we called it, it was off the hand of Brooke Neal, so New Zealand keep their referral. Yep. The clock is back on. Just over 10 minutes left in the second quarter. New Zealand having taken the lead, Australia having pegged them back. Stewart looks to help it forward. Hurts again. Forced wide by Thompson. And it seems to me that Neil and Thompson are closing down Hurts. Two of them every time. Aware of a danger. Kershaw goes wide. Good block again by Thompson inside the circle. Godoy talking to his eyes up in the stand. His assistant coaches as Stewart goes along the baseline. Balls from New Zealand had gone out of play. The whistle finally came. Clearly, what, whatever he said to them at quarter time is well, appears to be working. We don't know whether they're implementing what he wants them to or not, but they're certainly playing a lot better. So that is how the table stands. If it is a draw, Australia will go top of the ladder. Belgium will remain second, and New Zealand will remain third, where they started before this match started. New Zealand will play Argentina, Belgium will play Spain, the winner of the Argentina-New Zealand game. There's the coach of Belgium up in the stand. Here's Tyson giving us a wave, nice of him. Can't be easy for him either, can it? Trying to work out who he's going to be playing against. I know they get, obviously, days to, to try and work on their game plan. Absolutely. Brooke Perris now breaking forward, goes on the reverse stick. It goes across the deep and out of play. And these two teams have only met in a World Cup yep. twice. I think Brooke Perris has also been one of the lively Australians, not just today, but in the tournament as well. She's got an abundance of, of speed, quite happy to take the ball on the forehand or the reverse side. Century just a mistrap. Morgan comes forward and helps out. And Mary, I think, is going to get a card. Olivia Mary, two minutes on the side. Almost landed on her head as she was leaving the field of play. Yeah. 
Tom, first time gone under pro. I was about to say, Mal, it's interesting, like Australia's first ever international was against the Black Sticks. It was actually the Black Sticks' fourth international. That was in 1935 in Melbourne, and New Zealand won 2-1. You'd have thought, though, having started so early, they would have met in other World Cups, but only this is only their third meeting in a World Cup. 2010 in Pool 8, Australia won 4-1, and they drew 0-0 in 2014. As we see Tui Lotalava in the touch, driving towards the circle, just dispossessed. Kicks it straight into the Black Sticks player. Don't think there can be too many arguments. Penalty corner given. I mean, I think it's a, it's a good um, advantage initially because it could have been given as the free hit outside the circle for dangerous play, but Carolina de la Fuente played on and you could see exactly New Ze uh, sorry, Australia asking her the question and she's like, the player is literally now on, on, the, on the pitch and you've hit her in the quad. Penalty corners, one of the match for the Black Sticks coming into this game. They scored two from seven. Go to McLaren again. McLaren low, looking for the deflection. There's two Lotalava, I think, who is the one who almost got the first touch. They've won another. This is great defence by Australia. Wait for me, it's a fantastic take by Maddie Fitzpatrick, the number 10 just there. She makes the initial trap, and then I think the ball just bounces up onto her reverse stick. Goes to McLaren again. This time it goes straight into the first run. A play on is the call. Good running from Carrie McMahon. There's been another penalty corner. I think it's one of those that probably hit the kneecap, and you can see Jodie Kenny just asking. Carrie McMahon, where did it hit you? Good Just job she's got those, isn't it? Good job she's got her kneecaps covered. Absolutely. We'll get a McLaren again. This time she slips it to Neil, looking for the deflection from Mickelson, but she couldn't get it on target. I think this is such a hard deflection to try and do. It's a great slip move. Such pace generated. I think she's probably actually trying to score there, Brooke Neal, and she's just whipped it too far. Action goes straight up the other end of the pitch. Cannot take your eyes off the action. McMahon, that's a great ball aimed for Emily Smith. Long corner as it just came off the stick at the back. Lucy Bates goes back to Jody Kenny. The long and the short of Australia. Good ball. Wide. Slipped in Gunson again. Gets the touch, concedes the long corner. Approaching the final five minutes of the first half. This game's still tied up at one apiece. That's a heavy touch. recent meeting between these two teams was the North Games gold medal match where Black Sticks broke Australia's domination a 4-1 win. Everyone was saying they got the monkey off their back now. Good steal by Smith. Spins. Great pass to Bates. Took a deflection, comes to Parrish. She gets her feet out of the way well. New Zealand did brilliantly defending, also getting their feet out of the way. And now it's carried forward. Amy Robinson. Robinson given a little bit of space now, plays it into the feet of McMahon and it'll be free hit New Zealand just outside the 22 metres. Over the ball is Charlton. New 
Zealand in that attack were probably guilty of just going, trying to go forward one pass too early. There was space out wide, and if the ball had gone, then there's an opportunity for them to drive the, the circle from out wide. Nicholson breaking forward, look to lay it infield, coming back. Good defence from Renee Taylor. Now it's Paris. Nicholson. Taylor, close attention to Nicholson. Going New Zealand's way, well, not New Zealand's way, going Australia's way. A little bit disappointed. Kenny, oh, sorry, it's not Kershaw. And spin from her. She was surrounded by four New Zealand players, managed to create some space for herself. Paris now tries to do the same at Mickelson steals. Good pass from her, picks out Kelsey Smith. Smith releases on the reverse and into the top of the goal it goes. A wonderful finish from Sam Harrison. Restores New Zealand's lead, but there's going to be a referral. I wonder whether they think that came off the back of the stick. Australia asks for back of the stick. No problem. Yep. Oh, it does. Stick bounces off the turf and it comes off Harrison's back stick, so this should be a 16 for Australia. You can see the contact from the stick on the pitch first, just there. And then it's off the back of the stick. The way the ball looped up suggested that may have been the case. Brilliant referral for Brilliant. whoever called that. I have a decision for you. Uh, it is a free hit coming out, back stick. Australia retain their referral. Well, I do like that. Carolina De La Fuente gives a thumbs up to Jody Kenny. It was Kenny, I think, who obviously referred that one. And that is the benefit of having someone like Kenny in your back line. So much experience, over 200 caps for Australia. Bates may be small, but she's determined. Perry snap, a little bit of space. Malone making a run outside of Perry's cuts infield. Bates almost in the way. Paris though manages to find Smith. Smith checks back. Closed down well by Smith. And that was well read again by the Black Sticks. They got numbers going forward if they can move it quickly. McLaren making a run. Coming back and penalised though is Eddie Bone. She won't mind because Australia were looking like they were going to be stretched then. We can get more of that from New Zealand where they're pressing higher up the pitch. You can see the, the, the speed that they've got and the tenacity. And I think in that situation, Harrison was unfortunate not to get the goal, but Kelsey Smith has, has started this game very well for, for New Zealand. That was just a dangerous stick being raised as trying to avoid the challenge, but dangerous just the same. Bates again put under pressure by Charlton. Charlton comes up with the ball for the Black Sticks. Looks to lay it back. Kennedy. Charlton somehow got past Kenny. And then Lynch had to come to the rescue for Australia. And Sam Charlton, she'll be enjoying this because she said it was the London Olympics where she finally felt she belonged in the Black Sticks. We talked about this before, Mel. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Using around the 30 40 test mark. Yeah, I think you can play your first five or ten without fear almost because you don't know what to expect. And then realization kicks in and you begin, to, you know, you can go through a period of that self doubt. And then I think once you, you receive that 50th cap, which, you know, you get a one cap certificate and then you get a 50th kind of award then you really do begin to feel settled and I think, you know, she would have learnt a lot from the likes of Kayla Whitelock. She's now retired and she's taken on that role exceptionally well in that midfield. And in the final minute, Paul Godoyne, would he be happy? I think he would be because at the moment, the way it stands, his team sits top of Paul D. Still plenty of time left in this match and I'm sure 
plenty of drama as well as Charlton. Uh, sorry, Harrison picks up to turn. Bone following her all the way and then just poking it over the side. They need to get it in quickly if they're going to hope for one last attack before the hooter goes. Harrison weaving her way through. Tackle on the edge of the deep. And Harrison goes, it's come up off the stick of Grace Stewart, but that will be the final play of the first half. It's been honours even, Olivia Merry started the scoring for the Black Sticks. And it was Emily Smith who pegged one back for Australia. Well, they're still flying high, the Kiwi flags, but it is New Zealand 1, Australia 1 at half-time. Well, we're going to go pitch side now to Krista Cullen. And I'm with the captain, Emily. You got a, a goal for Australia on your birthday, and that seemed to lift the team. Do you think so? Um, yeah, we had a lot of chances and I knew it was going to be like this, both teams having multiple chances, so I'm glad that I could execute one because it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad to put one on the board. And a bit of end-to-end -end stuff, is that what you expect when Aussie play New Zealand? Yeah, every time we play them at this style, so we've got to have to make sure we can outrun them and stay with the whole second half. We've got to play a full 60 minutes this time and not ease up in the second half. Good luck out there. Thank you very much. Mark, a good first half performance. You guys went up, then the momentum shifted somewhat when the Aussies scored. Do you agree? Yeah, look, I think we just lost our way a little bit. Our defenders tried to rush up and we lost a little bit of shape, which gave them that counter attack goal. So we've just got to be more clinical and when we go forward, we just can't throw the ball away. And was that the game the, the game plan in the first in the first half team talk? To score goals, basically. <laughs> Perfect, good luck to you. Thanks very much, Krista. Well the second half about to get underway. Australia push back. Can New Zealand find those goals that Mark Hager was talking about? Australia will want to get a victory in this match and just rub the noses in the Kiwis. Penalty corner has been given, so the ideal start for Australia. Can't really ask for much more than that, can you, as a coach? Rose Goodell makes, an, makes has a bit of a shocker with that one. I think it's been given for going deliberately off the back line. I didn't see a foot in there, did you? No, it was hard to tell. I did wonder whether it just clipped her toe when she struggled with that. But Jodie Kenny has made her way forward. So too, Georgina Morgan. Captain Emily Smith will stop for Kenny. Chrissy Bates will stop for Morgan. I think that New Zealand will be expecting it to be Kenny. It'll be worth going with Morgan just to mix it up a bit. Morgan's been out for such a long time. Just a shift to the right for Morgan. Now a shift from Smith. Kenny whacks it. And she goes wide with the shot. I've seen Jody Kenny score these in the past. I don't think Malone's too far away. Is it Malone on the far post? Yeah, it is. She wasn't too far away from it. And I think as a as a hitter, it's nice to, for you to actually be able to put the ball in the position that you want to hit it, rather than being reliant on the the trapper to actually roll it into the exact spot. Jenny Kenny used to always hit her penalty corners till she was 19. That was when she started practicing drag flicking. 
It's the black stick stolen by Kelsey Smith. Smith into the circle she goes, unfortunately, gets right underneath that on the reverse stick. She has been a live wire for New Zealand. Ball just the angle that the ball was going away from goal made that extremely difficult for her to get anything remotely going across goal. She Bates has been involved for Australia a lot. Francis Davies just taking that over the side. Be just a little bit disappointed that his team having won the Commonwealth goal that they would maybe not be dominating this match as he would have liked to the circle but again, carried forward brilliantly by Charlton last possession in the end it's back with Bates two minds and has to double back Morgan has Harry McMahon square to her left she uses it Looking to close down is Gloin. McMahon, though, brilliant acceleration, pulls her away from Gloin, keeps going, looks to slip the ball inside. Thompson went to ground. Mickelson now. Forced infield, two players again, closing down that space, making Mickelson go infield. I think it's a great tactic by Australia to force Stacey Mickelson infield, but... A player of her quality should realise that that's the, that's the track that they've set for her. And I think, certainly for New Zealand, the, the space is round the outside. The Australian defence is really blocking and holding the middle of the pitch. They've got to use the pace that they've got in midfield and go around the, the Australian press, not through it. Renee Taylor saw a gap, went through it, was looking to play that into the path of Emily Smith. But Smith, unfortunately, on the angled run, just couldn't get there. That's the right idea, isn't it? Liz Thompson's feet are, are facing a certain way, so Emily Smith tries to roll it just past the heels of Thompson. Exactly the right pass, just couldn't get the couldn't get the uh, execution spot on. Great early ball from Eddie Bone. Brooke Paris cuts infield. Defending again, this time from Liz Thompson. Smith, though, really determined to make sure that that was Australia's ball. It is into the circle, it goes Malone deflected towards goal. Just out of play. Malone and Stewart are both in there. Malone it is that gets the touch. Stewart didn't do enough for me to get in front of the New Zealand defender. Actually, it's probably good defending by New Zealand there, to be fair. Rosie Malone has just come into this Australian team. He's only called up to the squad in May in, of this year and has really just settled in so well. She also has an achievement that people are not sure whether it's unique or not. She won three gold medals with Queensland in 2016 and under 16s, under 18 and senior level all in the same year now. The record books don't show anyone else doing that. But uh, we may stand corrected if there was someone. Taylor again, she's really getting involved at the start of this third quarter. And a good pass, good defence though from New Zealand, it had to be. Malone now closing down Thompson. Good work too from Emily Hertz. Emily Hertz again, who's done well to work her way back into the team. Malone. Absolutely. That went towards the deep. Smith has to be strong. Decision though goes Australia's way again. Okay. This is the Australia that I remember. Dominant, pressing high, not giving you time on the ball, working hard as a unit, hitting you on the counter attack. Almost the Australia we've been waiting for in this tournament. Stewart now breaking forward. Mickelson gives chase, taking a tumble. And she went back with Taryn Davy. Australia. Oh, a lovely little shimmy from Paris. It's gone into Gray Stewart. Penalty corner as it came up off Brooke Neal's stick. Ten out of ten to Brooke Paris there. Lovely little dummy on the on the south pass. 
runs into the circle and it's one of those little lifted balls, but you can see Brooke Neal's footwork wasn't as good as it should have been. She wasn't on her toes, so she sticks the stick out rather than actually moving her, her whole body and the stick together. A couple of careless penalty corners that have been given away by New Zealand in this half. Indeed. Maddie Fitzpatrick and Georgina Morgan now. The two players waiting at the top of the circle. Morgan at the first battery, Fitzpatrick at the second, it comes to Morgan. Morgan sweeps into the body of the Black Six player, I thought. They're looking for a stroke. Maggie? I can't see that look like it was a body. Okay, we'll take a look. I thought the player was in front of the keeper. Yes. The question is whether the keeper could go to cross. I'm not 100% sure what the referral was for, because I caught, thought Carolina De La Fuente gave the penalty, gave the corner. Stick to body, I'd say, corner. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a penalty corner. I have a decision for you. And they retain the referral. I thought they asked for a stroke. I'm not sure what they asked for. I didn't really, if I'm honest, I didn't hear the question go up to, to Maggie Giddens. Well, I heard Brooke Perris ask for a stroke, so I'm wondering how they keep the referral. But anyway, it's a penalty corner, mistrapped at the top. Fitzpatrick is a long, long way wide. Well, we've commented on corner routines in this competition, haven't we? And that's got to rank up there as, unfortunately for Australia, one of the worst. Injection was horrible, there was no trap, and then the shot was way, way, way off target. New Zealand have struggled to get any possession, they've given it away again. Picked up by Caitlin Nobbs. Again, Perris coming in off the sideline. So lively in this match, feeds Bates. Bates just played that a little bit behind McMahon, and it was picked up well by Harrison. Mickelson. Mickelson now got a chance to run through the middle. She's leaving Bates behind her. Keeps going, releases the ball to Smith. Across the face of goal, Lynch kicks it up in the air. Mickelson brings it down. Oh, and just wide of the post. And trying to get in on that at the post was Charles, uh, Harrison, rather. Kelsey Smith again. Great cross stroke shot Lynch has to play it with the big left foot and Stacey Mickelson nearly take decapitates a, an Australian on top of the circle but does really well actually to pull out of that shot and then hits a bullet to the far post and Harrison wasn't too far away Brooke Neal that was off Paris into Mickelson who played Brooke Paris and she's in space Kershaw maybe should have played that pass but she went herself as it turns out, she's made the right decision. Australia had numbers there. That was so important at the top of the circle. Brilliant from Thompson, and then she was just caught, I think, by Slattery. Australia with a high press, not giving New Zealand any space to move. Kelsey Smith working hard. Swing. Australia hit the ball. Kershaw first time to Slattery. She missed it though. It's getting a little bit narrow for New Zealand. It is, and their speed is round the outside, as I said, as I mentioned earlier. Stewart forces Mickelson infield. Again, she looks to feed the ball forward. It's a good one to Gunson. That was a, an aimless pass from McLaren. I think Perry McMahon did really well actually to get a touch on that to, to deflect the ball away. I think it was Gloin that had made the lead run to the baseline and McMahon just managed to get something on it and took the ball off her stick. I just feel at the moment we're not seeing much of Anita McLean. The big name player, Stacey Mickelson, is only being forced laterally. And they're the players that need to have an influence on the game for the Black Sticks. I think what Australia are doing well is they're stopping the supply line to those players. 
we, we know when those players are on the ball, they're dangerous, they're lethal, they're world-class players. So actually what they're doing is stopping the ball at source and not allowing those players to get the ball. And McLaren getting involved now. That's a good pass if she can get on the end. Mickelson was working really, really hard. It's almost like she was rowing a boat up the side with a stick in her hand. It's given away by Australia. Charlton finds Mickelson into the D she goes. Again, surrounded by Australian players. And she's done for shooting the ball. In the final five minutes of the third quarter, still no addition to the score. As Mark Hager still scribbling his notes, preparing for the final debriefing for his team as they go into the final 15 minutes. It's the last game in Pool D. So many permutations. The way it stands at the moment, Australia will finish top. New Zealand will finish third. And they will meet Argentina. Belgium will meet Spain. And the winner of that game between Argentina and New Zealand would meet Australia in the quarterfinal. And the quirks of the competition that they could meet each other again. their team on Paris looked up as she accelerates towards the circle to the D she goes but good defense again by New Zealand Mickelson driving through the middle Malone and Kenny making it difficult for her it was off the stick of Malone and then calmly played forward and Emily Smith has a little bit of space Brooke Neal in front of her she plays it early to Slattery looks to get it back Neal recovered well and now Cadell has space for the Black Six, although Australia wanting a referral. I thought there was a foot in the circle, I have to say. Okay. Maggie. Yeah, you're looking for a foot. No problem. I think it's, it's definitely before then. I think it's the... Catherine Slattery on, I think it's Liz Thompson, just there. This might be the angle that shows us better. I think Catherine Slattery's stick comes round and gets a touch. Yeah. There you yeah. go, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Carolina. Yes. I have a decision for you. Penalty corner. Um, keep that foot Correct. So Australia with their fifth penalty corner of the match. Another very good referral by them. And this time, Jody Kenny is on the pitch. Slattery makes her way down to the baseline. Is this the moment Australia snatch the lead? Deep conversation with Georgina Morgan at the top of the circle. And they've switched places. Now they shift. It goes to Kenny still. It's a short little pass to Morgan. And it was deflected well by Mickelson, who held her position well. Don't think it's the best dummy if I'm honest from Jody Kenny I, that's why I'm, I like the one where the drag flicker actually takes it and then rolls it behind their back but fantastic flying by Stacey Mickelson to to get onto the Georgia Morgan effort An important touch at the edge of the circle that time by Cadell Cadell carries forward now there's a good run ahead of her had to just check back and did well to get the free hit good lead from Gloin uh, Mickelson was just trying to steal an extra few metres. It's Patrick plays it out over the side. Coming forward is Francis Davies. One of the new faces in the New Zealand lineup. Francis Davies, born in Rotorua. And a debut against Malaysia earlier this year. 2016. 
maybe someone sabotaged your book. Wouldn't surprise me. No, I think it is my handwriting is pretty bad. Gunson now for the Black Sticks. And bounce favours New Zealand. Gloin now looks to take on Kenny, plays the pass infield. Just under hit there by Smith. Still though with the Black Sticks. Brilliantly timed tackle by Malone. Malone looking up as she come forward, just drops it back to Perris. And on the overlap comes Edwina Bow. Good pass forward to Stewart. Stewart looks to take on Neil. Neil though got a stick down and over the baseline it goes for another long corner. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. Edwina Bow. Back to Kenny. Nobs. Deflection, it was off the stick of Emily Hertz. That may well be the last play of this quarter of any meaning. Smith driving forward. Renee Taylor determined to get the ball off her. Smith determined to get it back off her and does so. Now Mickelson with a little bit of room to move. Kenny chasing, got a touch. Mickelson into the D she goes. Kenny, though, eventually takes it off her. Well, how Jody Kenny didn't commit a foul in that was brilliant. All about the timing, isn't it? I and mean, Stacey Mickelson is absolutely dazzling people with her stick skills. Takes on Jody Kenny there. He has a good couple of jab efforts at her. Did well not to give away a penalty corner then. And just when you felt she was going to unleash it, Kenny wins. Does indeed. No goals yet for Jody Kenny in this match. Still all tied up as we go into the final break of this last game in Pool D. It is still New Zealand one, Australia one. It's a chilly evening here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. Certainly the hockey has been hot. Here's the Stacey Mickelson effort. That's a big left foot by Lynch there. Does really well, actually, to, to pull out of that shot. I think it's Kershaw that's closing her down. I guess to have the awareness to watch the ball coming down out of the air, take it, see a player closing you down. Harris had nearly away. got on the end of it at the back away. post. To Harrison. This is how the pool stands at the moment with 15 minutes to go. Australia will top the pool if this stays as a draw. We'll have a bit of a break. New Zealand will have to play Argentina as we go down pitch side. And Krista Cullen is with Paul Godoy. I am Paul. 1 1 is the current standings. If that stays the same, you will top this group. How are you going to keep the Kiwis out? Yeah, it's difficult. You want to keep playing and making sure that we give ourselves an opportunity. Play on the outside, you know, get behind the ball and, and just keep it, you know, pretty simple. It's been pretty direct, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Is that what we expect when we see the Aussies play the Kiwis? Yeah, that's, it seems to go that way. We're trying to do a little bit differently, but, um, you know, the girls are excited and hopefully we can get the job done. Thanks very much. Thanks. Well, Emily Smith. What a birthday it would be if they could top the pool. She waits to get us underway in the final 15 minutes of this pool match. Thrown over the head. New Zealand have really been under the pump. Kershaw puts pressure on. Malone picks up the ball. Finds Kershaw. Slightly heavier touch than she would have liked. Now Smith comes, but good release. Finds McLaren. Her pass is a good one to Gloin. Mary's inside the circle. Mary pulled back to a great position. Turns, shoots. Saved by Rachel Lynch. Again, good positioning by the Australian goalkeeper. And that's just gone out of play off Rose Cadell's stick. Goes to show you can be under the pump for a quarter of the game and then fantastic ball in. Mary does well, uses her body to hold off Edwina Bone and gets a shot away. That's all you can ask from your striker. If you were picking holes, you'd want to try and hit the right foot, so go right back across goal, but perhaps it, the ball wasn't in the position to be able to do that. 
And a stolen by Slattery. Now Malone. Malone. Edge of the circle again, Ella Gunson. I'm not going to say which coach here at this tournament said this to me because I know they probably wouldn't want me to say so, but they were saying they felt Rachel Lynch is probably the world number one at the moment. It's just their organisation of the defence and her positioning once she's organised the defence is probably top draw. I think she's been there. Uh... An outstanding goalkeeper for a number of years. She had a little bit of a rivalry going with, I think it was Megan Wells, wasn't it, going into Rio? Ashley Wells, yeah. Ashley Wells, sorry. And um, yeah, I think, you know, Australians always have good goalkeepers. And I always remember playing against them thinking it was the weakest line, but we could never get, get the ball to her. But I think, um, yeah, Rachel Lynch has proved over a number of years that what a top quality goalkeeper she is. In Australia. On at the moment, but they're also trying to get that goal just to give them the victory in this match. Just gone out of play. Much how dominant, dominant they were in there. This is the 133rd meeting. An amazing stat, Mel. From June 1979 to July 2000, they played 34 games. Australia won 34, and there were two draws. They were unbeaten for 21 years against New Zealand. That's dominance. moment though New Zealand are finding it hard to find a way through a very well organized defense for Australia Mickelson a lovely run beat two defenders went through the middle caught the foot of Renee Taylor right on the edge of the circle Looking to get it inside the circle spin good defense swept away by Edwina Bone Kelsey Smith, she's so lively around the circle. In it goes again. Bone trying to get there. And a penalty corner goes New Zealand's way. And there's high fives all around. Is this the moment New Zealand take the lead? Again, it's Smith and Mickelson finds herself as the highest player. It's a given for obstruction, I would imagine. Mickelson pops the ball past Edwina Bone and then can't get on the end of it. Well, there's someone who believes they can do it. Brooke Neal comes forward. She's at the first battery. Anita McLaren at the second. They go to Brooke Neal. Brooke Neal sweeps. It's deflected away. Well, that was brilliant by Jody Kenny again. twice now that she's done this the best bit as well is how quickly she gets the face mask and all the protective gear off and then before you blink she's on top of the circle on that direct line to go I think that have beaten Lynch I have to say if Kenny hadn't have been there Kershaw now with a great run Charlton stops her just for a second New Zealand having to scramble Smith is there as she has been all night for New Zealand she's everywhere McLaren. That had to be watched all the way. By Kenny looking for the return pass, and again it's Kelsey Smith who picks up for the Black Sticks. Brilliantly timed tackle this time from Brooke Perris. Emily Hertz picks up. Malone's going on the overlap down the side, looking to try and find it. Malone will pick it up now for Australia. Made it back though, and it's Kelsey Smith now with space to carry forward. Looking to feed it into the path of Mickelson. Mickelson with one hand on the stick, got it under control. She cuts infield. McLaren is there. McLaren looks to lay it to the side. Shot, it's missed. McLaren was there for the rebound. It was such a good opportunity for New Zealand. Daw was the one who played it to the back post. Anita McLaren does exceptionally well. A give and go, and then almost then stopped the run, didn't she? Lovely for her um, door to, to roll onto that side, and to just see she really pulls it badly wide. That's a great one by McLaren, and that's a good touch from Hertz. 
And that's brilliant defending again from Brooke Neal. Full stretch. Had to make the touch. Hurts those stolen it back for Australia. That's hit the foot of Ella Gunson just inside the circle. No complaints from her, but she is frustrated with herself. How many of those have we seen today? The miss trap not under pressure at all. Bounce onto a foot and give away a, an easy penalty corner that you've got to try and eradicate going into the knockout phases of the tournament. Sally Rutherford needs to marshal her troops. She said she considered retiring after Rio, but then thought, no, I'm at the top of my game at the moment. I'm going to stay on. Well, she's going to have to be at the top of her game now as Jodie Kenny waits again at the top of the circle. They go to Kenny, slaps it, good stop in front of the goalkeeper, and swept clear by New Zealand. Australia, though, on the attack again. And Stewart it was who tried to find a way inside the deep. I feel like we've got Battle of the Post players going on at the moment. Anything Jodie Kenny can do, Brooke Neal seems to do better. Still brave, isn't it? If you, particularly in all the protective gear with the gloves, if you, the, the stick twists in your, in your hand, you get a deflection over your goalkeeper and your goalkeeper looks at you and says, what are you doing? Absolutely. Oh, Neil, what a tough Fangaray girls high. And with Sam and Charlotte Harrison. Some good alumni coming out of that school. Maddie Fitzpatrick just hesitates over the ball, I'm sure. Players are a little bit puffed. I know they're fit, but working hard. It was a great block coming from Harrison. Australia, though, again, get it clear and attack at pace. And it's come again off the foot. Or oh, I know, it was actually off the stick of Neil, so it will be a long corner. That's the way it bobbled, it appeared as if it may have been a foot. Harris finds Slattery. Defence well by New Zealand. Uh, into feet can run. Oh dear. Door has got clinked on the head. Hopefully there's blood, but certainly there's some concern on the bench. Cadell, that's a free hit for New Zealand. Past the halfway point in the final quarter now. Nicholson still fighting to find a way and lead her team to victory. A win to New Zealand would lift them to the top of the pool. At the moment, they're sitting in third place. Cadell. Slattery now. Nowhere really to go. Hurts though, just clipping the foot. She has not knocked the ball away there, Emily Hurts. The green card could be telling. Two minutes for Australia down to ten. And that might make all the difference at the back. The defence again though from Caden Nobbs. Inside their own deep. Haven't been for most of this last quarter. Emily Hurts sitting there just having to contemplate that decision. Mission build up from New Zealand. Nicholson into the D she goes again. Nobbs was the one with the telling tackle, Slattery slips the ball out wide now as it comes to Fitzpatrick. The crowd were not happy with that decision. Neither were you, Mel. Well, 
I'm not sure how close it actually was. I didn't. Think, I mean, it was a heck of a pick, wasn't it, by Emily Smith, and she was in on goal. Yeah. Was it evasive action? Maybe. Oh, it's one of those, isn't it? It's all down to opinion. And it's just been thrown straight out of play. Rose Cadell comes forward. Some passes. Sweep to Tatla Gunson. Reflected off knobs into the circle. First short. And clearing up again at the back is McMahon. It was unfortunate for New Zealand that Harrison was on her knees when the ball came to her. And she's penalised for shooting the ball with a stick. In the final five minutes of this match, have Australia done enough to claim top spot in what was billed the group of death? Every team in the pool have been recorded one victory. Australia look like they're going to be the only team to get... Well, they're going to get two draws in it. They'll be the only team undefeated within the pool. Four minutes to go, though. There are indeed, but they're playing and defending at the moment. I just feel it's going to need something really special from New Zealand. Davies forced to go back. Can open up play now. Gunson looking at options as she receives. Is that off the stick of Kershaw, though? She brings it down well. Looks to take on Charlton. Goes around Kelsey Smith. And pushes it into the path of Brooke Paris. Paris forced down towards the corner. Manages to get it through the legs, but possession going back to Ella Gunson. Hurts putting pressure on. She's back on after a green card. Morgan. And now Kenny. Numbers forward for Australia. Corner for the hockey ruse. Well, we need a player of the match. Now, well, from you, a vitality player of the match. I reckon that's a hard one to call in this one. I've got a couple in mind, you're all right. Well, I think we're going to have to get that off you fairly soon as Australia into the deep. Dispossessed again. It's picked up well by Renee Taylor to the baseline, this could be the goal, the decider, brilliant defence again, Brooke Neal, superb. Harrison now, hemmed in, dispossessed, good work from Malone, now it's Kenny. Kenny forced towards the corner, over the baseline it goes, it is going to be a long corner. Neil with a great clearance. Jody Kenny over the ball for Australia. Are they going to find a winner? Defence again, Gunson. He's been so solid at the back for the Black Sticks. the foot it's going to be a New Zealand ball can I have your decision on your vitality player of the match you can I had three one was Brooke Neal um, for New Zealand who are now about to go to a kicking back I think Brooke Paris has been absolutely outstanding for Australia um, but my player of the match the match sorry is Kelsey Smith number 25 for New Zealand I think she's been outstanding and at the heart of everything that New Zealand have done today both in a defense as well as an attack So Sally Rutherford Right, to play no further part in the match. New Zealand know that a win will lift them to top of the pool. One minute, 46 seconds, they've gone with a kicking fullback. It's not going to make any difference if Australia win this game, but it will make a difference with New Zealand with an extra outfield player. They need to have the ball, though. Stewart picks up for Australia, takes it into the corner again. That'll just eat up time. Looks to try and spin. She's surrounded by Blacksticks players. Decision goes the way of the Black Sticks. Ella Gunson has to get the ball. Ball patrol gone missing when you need them most. 
looped in play. Quite how Rose Cadell did that, I'm not sure. Here come New Zealand, the crowd that are supporting them, urging them on as Malone steals possession away. One back again by Gunson. We're in the final minute, it's an aerial pass, needed to be brought under control and was brilliantly. Good work by Maddie Fitzpatrick. Australia just need to keep possession. Bates just let it run over the side. Yeah. We haven't seen Kalindi come with it. I should mention that again. She went off with an injury. So Australia played most of the game with just 17 or 16 outfield players. Given away by New Zealand rather cheaply. Gunson will collect. She needs to move the ball quickly. 25 seconds left. Neil will find Davies. Davies now sees a wall of gold in front of her. McLaren was wide, but had just stepped in off the flank. McLaren puts the ball over the side. And that may well be that for New Zealand. Another draw between these two teams. Taken into the corner by Jody Kenny. Kenny takes it in the corner. The hooter goes. Australian players hug. They will finish top of pool D. New Zealand were valiant, but Australia just made it so hard for them to break them down. So it means that New Zealand will finish third in the pool and will meet Argentina. Belgium will be second and will play Spain. But if New Zealand could beat Argentina, these two could meet in the quarter-final. The two coaches shake hands, as do the players. Australia made to work very, very hard. But what a game we've witnessed. New Zealand won, Australia won. Well, they worked very, very hard in that match. And this is what it means. So, Australia finished top of the pool. They go straight through to the quarterfinals. Belgium, after that wonderful win today over Japan, finished second. And they will meet Spain and then it will be New Zealand versus Argentina with the winner of that match playing Australia. There's still some more action to come, and this is tomorrow's order of play. We will see Korea play China, the Netherlands play Italy, both those teams through already to the next round. India take on the USA, and then the big one, Ireland, who've topped their pool, take on the host nation, England. As we go pitch side now to Krista Cullen, who's with Jody Kenny. I absolutely am, Jody. You managed to secure a 1-1 draw, which is sufficient to top the pool, so you guys must be really chuffed. Look, yeah, we're really happy. It would have been nice to come out with a win, but our draw was enough, and we were really happy with our efforts tonight, so well done to our girls. And the New Zealanders threw the kitchen sink at you guys. You know, there was a couple of saves that you personally had to do off the line um, in some of the penalty corners. They couldn't have put more effort into it. Yeah, absolutely. And we knew it was going to you know, come down to the death tonight. They're always fiery and it's always a great competitive match. And it definitely was that tonight. And yeah, just happy to come away with the draw and yeah, a few saves on the post, which are a bit <laughs> nerve wracking, but we got there in the end. Congratulations and you know, looking forward to your quarterfinal knockout. Yeah, very excited. Thank you very much. Cheers.